Okay, now, a crosscut saw, unlike a rip saw, is filed at an angle to the center line of the blade, and that means that you have to file every other tooth from the near side, then turn the saw around and file every other tooth the other way. The angle at which the front face of the tooth is filed is called the fleam. Uh, this is approximately 15 degrees. I've marked 15 degrees on this piece of paper so I can line my file up to it visually as I go along. Move that down and make sure I'm at the right angle and maintaining consistency. Okay, so we start at the back end once more. Marking the teeth. This is the most important tool in all of sharpening. Magic marker allows you to see what you're doing. Now, you want to be filing the tooth that is bent away from you. The back of that tooth, which means you're also filing the front of the tooth behind it. So you want to line the file up with the line on the paper. And again, count your strokes. Do it with a light touch. It tends to catch if you push too hard. And continue all the way to the tip of the saw. One really nice thing about hand filing your own saws is that you can experiment with geometry of the sawtooth. 15 degrees is a general purpose geometry. You might find that 20 degrees works better in certain kinds of woods. Another um, potential thing to experiment with is not holding the file horizontal, but holding it at an angle. This creates a slightly deeper gullet in the tooth, which clears the uh, sawdust more quickly. And although it can't be done easily in a um, mechanical saw filer, you can easily do that on a, uh, by hand filing. Likewise, the progressive pitch saws that we make almost have to be filed by hand. And hand filing makes a much better job in any case. So now that we've filed this saw, we should go test cut that as well. Well, the saw is cutting beautifully, but if it isn't cutting well, or if it's binding, or difficult to saw straight to the line, then it's time to check your set. Set refers to the amount that each tooth is bent away from the saw plate. <clears throat> if it's too little, the saw will tend to bind in the cut. If it's heavier on one side than another, the saw will tend to drift towards the side with a heavier set. This can be corrected, and now's the time to take a look at how. After a certain number of sharpenings, you're going to need to reset the saw, because the teeth get worn down, and the taper which is set into them becomes less wide. Um, usually that's only after a half a dozen or more sharpenings. In order to set the teeth, you need a saw set. This is a uh, currently available model. It has a little plunger that comes out from here and hits against this circular anvil, which has a tapered uh, section to it that you can rotate for greater or lesser taper. It's marked with numbers that are uh, supposed to correspond to the teeth per inch that you want to set, but they're only a general guideline. And uh, the finest number this goes to is 12. We're working on a 15 tooth dovetail saw right here. So one modification will be helpful for any saw set. 
including this old Stanley, which I will be using, like the pistol grip style. Uh, the modification is to disassemble the saw set, remove the little plunger that is in the middle here, comes out and hits the anvil, and grind it narrower so that it's no bigger than the width of the base of the tooth that you're trying to set. If it's wider, it's not going to do a very good job. Now, the anvil has a taper on it. The circular piece also has a taper on it. And that needs to be adjusted so that you are bending, the, the little plunger is pressing the tooth against the anvil, and you're only bending the top two-thirds of the tooth. You don't want the plunger, the plunger to overbend the tooth to all the way down to the bottom. So I've set this one for the saw we have here. And in the beginning, it's a bit of trial and error. For a fine joinery saw, like a dovetail saw, you want as minimum set as possible, which is uh, typically two to three thousandths of an inch. So you can check with calipers. The uh, saw plate stock, in this case, is 20 thousandths of an inch thick. So we want to be looking for an overall thickness of 20 to 25, somewhere in there. It's pretty hard to measure just the set on just one side of a saw without specialized equipment. But we can get very close with this. And as long as you set every other tooth from one side and every other tooth from the other side with consistent pressure as you go down, you should have very closely matching set on both sides. So let's take a look at this. You need good light. The saw set sets down on the saw. And you want to position it so the plunger hits a tooth that's bending away from you. Give it a firm grasp. Move to the next tooth that's bending away. So skip a tooth. Repeat. Try to maintain consistent pressure. Move to the next alternate tooth and repeat. One thing you can do when you're learning to set is to uh, just set the last inch or so from one side and the other. Check the overall width you have and then proceed down the rest of the saw. Or you can begin by uh, setting the teeth on, a, on another saw that isn't as valuable to you and get some practice with that and measure and get your amount of set just right. Now sometimes you will experience the saw wandering in the cut, consistently cutting to one side or the other. If that's the case, and you're pretty sure that your sawing technique is good, then you might have the set too heavy on the side to which the saw is wandering. You can try to measure your set again, see if it looks reasonable. And it's okay to take a fine file or a diamond file and lightly stroke a couple of strokes along the edge of the teeth with a file flat and test cut your saw again to see if it corrects the wandering. It's not ideal, but it does work. Now eventually, after you've been sharpening saw um, a number of times, you might find that the teeth are different heights. They become a little irregular in shape, perhaps. Then it's the time to um, joint the teeth of the saw, which is a process of filing them all down level, and then going back and resharpening and reshaping each one so that they're consistent and even. Mm -hmm.